oh, he changed it up then. You didn't do the dim, dim, dim. You just did do you know, the every dim, time dim. I've done three claps, I have failed to actually get two of the claps, all three to line up. Only two of the claps have lined up. And I don't know whether it's me I think or it's, whether it's I think just it's the internet. No, I think what? it's you. It's a, I definitely it's a, think it's a me you. problem. You, yeah, no, I definitely think that's you. You're not good at clapping. <laughs> that's it, I'm just, my sound waves are uneven. Can't handle it. Your brain waves are uneven. Mate, <laughs> how do you know? <laughs> I'm inside your head. That's how I know. If you're inside my head, you'll know what I'm about to say to you. I wish. Wait. I got it. Should we say it on on three? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that was way too into Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, go. Yeah. Right. No, go on. I'm ready. I'm ready. Um. No, I've lost it now. No, Wait, no, no three. Go on. go on. Yeah. Two. One. Oh, no, my baby. The moon landing never spinner. happened. Shit. What? What? No? What? Rude. I just thought that was what you were going to say. I thought you were making a reference to the other other episodes. Mm, oh, you see, well, that's well, that's where you're wrong. Because instead, I was going to start the the biggest truth of our time. The moon landing never happened. No, no, it didn't. Are you sure? <laughs> oh, positive, mate. Yeah. I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one. No, <laughs> really. And that what a great episode. Thank you for listening. Did it? Did it? Did Bye bye. No, I do have something I want to I want to say to you though. Is now it, this it's, is it's debate time. It, it's <laughs> it's debate time. And after that, the spelling bee. This is something which I don't think you're going to know a huge amount about, but I think oh, you're going to have quite a strong opinion on it. Oh shit! And this is why I'm, I want to I want to test this. I want to test this. Water. I do know that turtles breed out of their ass. Breed out of their ass. Yeah. Oh, breathe. Breathe, not breed. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. So, modified cars are better than normal stock cars and are not driven by yobbos. Oh my god, man. <laughs> Why? Why the cars? You know I don't care about cars. <laughs> I have just just as a reference, and I'll say this to you because I know you already know. But just I have zero, and I mean zero interest in cars, what's a fucking ever. I don't care. They're just a piece of metal on wheels that move at a high speed. All right? Move at a high speed. That's it. All right, that's all. That's my limited knowledge about cars. All right. So, so I've got to. So, I guess I'll get. Oh, I'll have to learn. Go ahead. Do well. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you have an opinion though on do you see a car goes past that kind of goes yeah dickheads right right there there, <laughs> there it is that's that's what i need to tap into that okay. that right there so i i think now i i have i have all flavors of opinions in my head about this but i'm gonna fall on this one for today because Bear in mind, you've only got 30 minutes to convince me. <laughs> I, I used to see a car going past that was dropped on its ass, so with, you know, one that can't get over a speed bump, mm. that was had some massive rear can on it, and I used to think, what a yob. What an unbelievable yob. They just, ugh, just useless. Ugh, disgusting. D- disgraceful. Ordinary. Tiny penises. All of them. Yeah. <laughs> and now... I find myself buying suspension kits and <laughs> modifications yeah, for but, my own car. Okay, but does your car make the loudest noise in the in the in the village? Not right now it doesn't, but it could do. Do you want it to? I'd like it to sound fun and exciting. But it doesn't sound but fun it... or exciting. I'm gonna I'm gonna no, burst right I'm gonna burst like your car fueled bubble right here. It doesn't sound fun and exciting. It sounds obnoxious and annoying. <laughs> I don't think... It, I think... Because here's the thing. When you get a like a performance car, uh-huh. like, I don't know, a Lamborghini or an Aston Martin, they sound epic. Yeah. No one ever goes, oh, they just sound terrible. Yeah, I know. Because they're not like shitty 2,000 pound cars. They're 50 to 500 grand cars. Yeah, they are. Like but the worst thing, the worst thing is Joel, 
I'm sorry to cut you off, but the worst thing is, is if you hear this go past you, literally, and it literally sounds like their their engine has popped a gasket, okay, <laughs> as it's gone past, and you turn around and you're expecting some like big fat juicy car, and you've got you see some shitty Ford Fiesta that's struggling, <laughs> right? That that ain't good, all right. But if I turn no, around yeah. and saw a Lamborghini drive past, I'd be like, all right, fair enough. You've still got a small cock, but fair enough. What if it's just like it's like a wide body Fiesta? So it's just a little bit cooler than a normal Fiesta. I still wouldn't still... give a shit. I prefer quiet cars. Oh really? So okay, so here's an interesting thing because I work with a few different car brands, and Rolls Royces are very, very quiet. They yeah. have a lot of them have V12 engines, mm-hmm. um, so very powerful, very big, very capable. But it it is the quietest V12 engine you'll ever experience because you just can't hear it. You know, you you put your foot down and the car just sort of floats along. Yeah. Would that be your cup of tea? My cup of tea is a Tesla that doesn't make a noise and it shoots off at the speed of oblivion. Just a, a whistle as the as yeah. the wind goes. Oh god, yeah. Mate, the 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 sports car Tesla, whether it's ever been released yet, I think it has. But the sports model of a Tesla car, oh, the Roadster. That yeah, one. that one. Oh my God, that is the best car ever ever made because you put your foot down, doesn't really make a noise, and it's gone. Did you see the concept video of that Roadster where Elon Musk, for whatever ungodly reason, decided to you know do a simulation with some cold gas thrusters on the back of the car? No. And I think I think it's zero to sixty speed without cold gas thrusters was like 1.9 seconds so we're talking the realms of the fastest production car ever made yeah yeah and then with the thrusters it was like 1.1 seconds or something (laughs) like that (laughs) and i was like that i mean to be fair that would make a bit of noise it would would sound more like a jet than it would anything else (laughs) and that to me sounded like i would love to experience that don't get me wrong there is something I, i i say i like quiet cars but then my favorite car i think of all time is a ford mustang and that is probably bordering on like one of the loudest cars ever made when it's a very very grunty car yeah but that's like that's that's i don't know there's there's a difference between like what you say it's a grunty car there's like a gravel to the to the to the noise it's not you don't sound like a dickhead and you're not like revving (laughs) you're not revving with a, with a Ford, I can imagine people revving their engine and it sounds sick. But if you're driving down the road and it sounds like, <laughs> literally, I hope you take the wrong turn and fall off a cliff. <laughs> no, I, I know. Okay. So I have to concede a little bit here because there is a thing. Um, Your argument is like flawed, Joel. Exhaust is not flawed. <laughs> it's, it's just complex. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the, it's the <laughs> colourful tapestry. Uh-huh. my argument that we are exploring of course and there is a an exhaust drone they call it where you can sometimes buy an aftermarket exhaust and at certain rpms there is a horrific drone especially if the note is quite a flat note it's sort of just a and it's loud and it's obnoxious and nobody likes those and i do agree they get really irritating yeah. um and, and what you want is something which is is quiet enough when you're, you know, just going along, or it has some kind of tone, but it's nothing too crazy. And then when you put your foot down and you rev the car, that's when you you hear the nice, the kind of lovely sounds and the and the, I, and the deep tones. I think I think the sound of a car is nice when it's revved, not when it's driving. Yeah, I can get that. There we go. I win. <laughs> <laughs> but here, but here's the thing. Okay, so you take your Tesla Roadster. And you're very happy with it. Uh-huh. Actually, no, not Tesla Roadster, because that's already pretty intense. Let's take your Tesla Model S, you know, the kind of saloon one. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. And it's lovely and quick. You're really happy with it. You love the car. Mm-hmm. You know, you just big Gareth smiles. All big round. Gareth smile. Love a big Gareth smile. Big happy. Yeah, me too, man. Yeah. Yeah, big Gareth, big happy. Big happy, big Gareth. And you, you look at the car one day, and you're like, do you know what? Those wheels are just slightly too far into the wheel arches and there is this massive gap 
between the wheel and the body, which just makes the car look, I don't know, it just doesn't look as good as it could. Doesn't what about if flush. I... Yeah, it doesn't look flush. What about if I was to change this suspension, uh -huh. lower the car down so that the wheels fit more flush in the arches, still mm -hmm. got enough room to move about, and it's not going to bottom out as soon as you try and go over a bump. But what if I did that, and then all of a sudden, you're now getting into modifying a car. Are you now a yob just because no. you've put your suspension, no, you've put your Tesla on some coilovers? No. You're not, so where does the, okay, so when you start making a yob noise like a dickhead. <laughs> so it's all on the noise. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't care what you do to your car, but once I have to start hearing it, then you can suck a dick. Have you have you heard of the the people that uh, in Teslas you can actually pipe a, f a sound connected to your accelerator, two speakers outside the car to make it sound like almost anything you like? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. That I'd love sick, that. To be fair, like you could either make it sound like something from Star Trek or Star Wars. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. Um, but you could also make it sound like a V12 or a loud Ford Fiesta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for me the the realms of yob with a small knob are <laughs> in <laughs> when you when i when you start in 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 preaching is that the right word imposing imposing yeah. your car on other people's lives that is when you're a, a yob with a small knob all right because yeah. i'll be i'll be completely forthright and honest every single time i hear a little shitty car drive past me that's loud as balls right and i'm not afraid to say this i do wish he would take the wrong turn and it would teetotal itself <laughs> you just want that car off the road by any means possible yeah just, just get it out of my life 100 percent. but then if if a um i don't know let's say if a completely kitted out ford uh, Ford Mustang came around the corner and it was quiet but then it stopped and it revved its engines and it was loud I probably would completely soil my pants just in like a good way yeah okay to be honest with you because this is this is a, for me as well I, I agree when you've got someone who has their car so obnoxiously loud and it's not loud in a, a way which makes you think it's done tastefully. It's loud in a way which just sounds <laughs> horrific. Yeah. Then, yeah, you do. They are irritating when, especially when something goes past and it's so so annoyingly loud that you actually can't have a conversation. Yeah. Or it's just like when it's stopped at a red light and it's just like <laughs> constant bangs and pops going off and nothing seems to fit quite right. Yeah. There is a sense of the whole package has to be the same. You know, you, a fast car needs to look fast. It needs to actually be fast as well as sounding fast. Well, if you have a, you know, little tiny Fiesta, it should probably, you can make it look better and sound better, but don't make it look or sound like a Lamborghini. Yeah. But then there are also like modifications that should never be on a car, like lime green wheels. And, <laughs> like <really. laughs> and an exhaust that literally looks like the end of a bell end, you know? Flat so. wheels, as in flat colored wheels. Yeah. So you have like a block color, like like yellow, like your white or your green, but they're not a deep shine color, like, or like a nice silver. They are just a very one dimensional color. I agree. There's uh, the only car I've ever seen that work on, really, is a Subaru Impreza. I That's don't it, even... Which is basically like a rally car. This is what I mean. This is the limit of my car knowledge. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> you don't need to... It's a nice blue car that a lot of enthusiasts buy to kind of make it powerful. It it did loads of rallying. It was a very right. successful rally car. And it has this very classic blue um, paint scheme with gold wheels. Okay. It's great. You'd love it. Is it? I don't think I would. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but but it, it makes me laugh, though, because when I used to see, you know, these so-called yobs traveling down the streets of which I live on, and I would be like, oh, my gosh, these people just need to go away. And now I am one of a those yob. yobs, an aspiring a technician. <laughs> I'm a yob with a small knob. 
<laughs> no, this isn't going the way I wanted it to. I need to bring it back. I was going to say, you're, you're, me, man. Mate, you're, <laughs> you're awful at this one. <laughs> no, I can do this. I no. can do this. No, I don't think you can. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay it out on the table like this. I'm right. I've already won. <laughs> all right, and that is with a lack of car knowledge. I'm kind of the best, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, you just, you're just great. You've, but I'm no, a- you have, a, you did agree though. You did agree that car modifications are not necessarily a bad thing. But that wasn't your argument. The argument is: Are they better than stock? cars or you know normal no, cars that, not like they see it completely depends but if i had to choose they're not better than stock cars you know why you know why stock cars are made and this is a firm belief of mine for for many things it's almost like going to a restaurant having a michelin star chef make this beautiful meal for you plate it up put it on your table and you pick up that plate and go back to the chef and think, sorry, I think that chicken should have been on the other side of the plate. <laughs> you know? But yeah, but then... They're doing their job in a way where that car should be borderline perfect when you get it. And it, it is their interpretation of said car. But what if... But who are the Michelin star chefs of the cars? Because it's like if you go to Elon your Musk. local <laughs> dirty kebab takeaway... And you're like, I want a really nice dirty kebab. And they go, yeah, sure. But then when you get that kebab, you don't sort of praise it for what it is. You're like, oh, give me the chili sauce. Give me the garlic sauce. Give me everything. I'm going to put my chips on there. I'm going to put some salad on there. I'm even going to add some hummus into this meal because I just fancy it. And you just like effectively ruin the meal. But then I know what you mean. When you go to a Michelin star restaurant, the idea is to enjoy the experience they have procured for you. Right. You know. But so, I think there are car manufacturers out there that you need to mix and match their meal to really make it work for you. Like who? Like Mini. Take Minis, for example. Minis. Do I have a Mini? Yes. <laughs> but Do I like it? Affect my... Yes. Yes. <laughs> that doesn't affect my answer at all. Favoritism. It's not favoritism. It kind of is. You're, kind of, you're kind of losing a... me on this argument, I'm not going to lie. It's a That's... live case study. <laughs> <laughs> it's personal experience manifest into argument. Nice. <laughs> so you're telling me that you would rather go and buy your little VW up, right? As you do. That's a really small car, by the way. VW up. I don't even know what that is. Imagine a little two door car. <laughs> Imagine that your gran would buy, right? A little small. No, little I can't city because car my gran don't drive. So that, that your that your granddad would buy. Joel, my granddad buys Rolls Royces, so... What? No, I'm joking. No, I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so listen Are here, my boy. There? Unfortunately, every member of my family drives Mercedes. Okay? If you've ever driven a Rolls Royce... I haven't it? driven anything, because I don't drive. So. Do you, oh, do you not have a license yet? No. Oh, this is how see, little would... I know. I don't even know about cars. I don't even know how to drive <laughs> a car. <laughs> I got a question for you. How many wheels are on a car? Um, oh god. One, two, three. At least, at least two. At least, <laughs> at least two. At least yeah. two. Now you are correct. By default, you are correct there. We di- we digress. <laughs> we digress. I I think that if I was to give you an option of a well well modified car. Mm-hmm. to its stock variant, I think you would choose the modified one over the stock, especially when you when you learn to drive. I, I think, think you would. I would agree up until a certain brand of car. Oh, okay. So, like, if you, if you put a modified Tesla in front of me and then a stock Tesla, I'd probably just take the stock. If you put a Ford Mustang modified and a not modified, I'd probably take just the, the stock. If you put a Bentley... Rolls Royce, any of the top brands of cars, I'd probably take stock. But then if you put a Ford Fiesta in front of me, I'd probably take modified. <laughs> I thought you were just going to say stock. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd probably take modified if it looked nice. That's fair. That's fair. Well, you can you can ride with me in my sick as hell mini when the, it's when wait it's the ready. one that recently broke down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that one 
modified cars are better, especially when they don't drive. <laughs> Story of any anyone who's modified their car. That it's it just spends so much time on a ramp. <laughs> oh my goodness, but it's worth man. it for the odd weeks that it works. It's worth it. I don't think it is. <laughs> there's no, it's just there's probably millions of engineers out there probably thinking, please don't fuck with the car, please don't fuck with the car, please don't fuck, and it's broken. <laughs> there are definitely elements of the car that you don't want to mess with. Like, you know, there's this whole thing about engine covers where a lot of people think that a plastic engine cover is there because it's, oh, it's going to insulate my engine. If I take it off, my engine will actually run a lot better. But as a matter of fact, that engine cover is actually there to help sort of channel air around and over the engine, and it actually helps. It's part of the cooling of the engine. And you can take it off, but it's not a bad thing that it's there. There are lots of things like that where, yeah, you're right, you don't want to mess with certain things on a car. Did you, but... take, did you take that off your Mini? No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't really... The Mini doesn't really have an engine cover. Okay. It's sort of... It's got a cover of what we'd call the, the, the rail that holds the uh, injectors. That has a cover, but the other bit of the engine is just the top of the engine. Right. Well, Joel, so. I'm going to give you, like, two or three minutes to conclude your argument, and then I'll make my final verdict. Okay, sure. So, I think you can modify your car in such a way that it looks tasteful, it sounds better and more personal to you than other cars and it, it's definitely a way to sort of identify yourself but it does not sound yobbish i think you can modify a car to make it look wonderful to make it really exciting to drive and also increase its performance so that effectively you become a yob with a big knob wow a yob with a big knob there you go but what if you end up modifying it so it looks ugly well, would you would would you, if, if you had, if you modified your car and it looked ugly, but it drove like a beast, would you care? I think I, the part of me would care because on the road, you can't drive for pure performance. You're not racing on the road because there's too many hazards and there's other people and it's not safe to do that. So part of modifying a, a street car is making it look quite nice because that's quite a big part of a street car. Um... And it's all the same from the factory. You know, when they design the car, they design it to look nice. They design it to look good on the road. Um, but So I think I would care if it drove amazingly well but looked horrific. But thankfully, because of aerodynamics, a lot of the time, if the car drives really well, you know, it doesn't look that bad if you're using... Unless you've got wheels. lime green wheels. Unless you've got blocked lime green wheels. Yeah. And we reach an agreement. Uh... No. <laughs> I think stock cars are just better. Mother Hubbard. I'm sorry. I think Fine. On, on a general basis, I would prefer to buy... I think I'd feel safer. I think I'd prefer to buy a stock car than a modified car. Albeit, whilst I can agree to, a, to an extent that some modified cars are beautiful and they sound really cool... Sometimes, on a general basis, I've never really seen a lot of modified cars that aren't yobbish with a small knobbish. All right. Okay. Do you know what? That's like a 30% agreement rate, and I'll take it. You can get, you can get a quarter of a point for that one. <laughs> yes. So the score Wait currently... Huh? Wait until you're driving, and then maybe, maybe things will change. <sighs> No, I won't change my mind. That's almost, that's almost <laughs> like say, wait until you've got a kid and see how much you like him. Then no, I don't like kids and I don't want one. Right? Oh, surely you'd love a kid if you if it was your own. But I, but that will never happen. <laughs> 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 However, the the score as it stands is one and a quarter to one. I now have my argument to gain the lead. The gain. Oh, is, it, is this a lead thing? Is it? Is this how we're doing this now? Yeah, we're, we're keeping, basing I'm, our friendship on game. Keeping, I'm keeping track of these points, my boy. Oh no! It is one and a quarter to one because we both we both won last week. Sorry, not last week. However long ago it was, <laughs> right? We both yeah. won then. You've got a quarter point ish. 
You don't even. I don't even think you should have that. But you know what? I think I should have a third point. But all right, a third, whatever. If you want to be fucking. No, no, don't do a third. Fractions are horrible. Just go exactly, on. a quarter of a point. Now, Joel. Okay. Honey is the best thing that has ever been produced on this planet. Mm. Apart from, what about you? <laughs> Oh, you, you little flirt. You. Oh, no, 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 honey's shit. a lot sweeter and better for you than I am. Okay? <laughs> Open the doors to our toxic friendship. <laughs> so you're, you're saying to me that honey, as yes. in the food product made by bees, yes, is the best thing to ever be produced on this planet. The, the best... The best thing that's ever been produced on this planet that can can be that can can be nice <laughs> nice that can be consumed. Right now, when you say consumed, do you mean physically consumed? Because you can consume a lot that's not physical. Like what? Like programs or books or ideas? Yeah, like like a, 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 su- a sustenance. So we're saying the kind of the best food product or drink. You can you you know it's not necessarily a f- in in the in the category of consumption in terms of human sustenance and just general um, well being. Honey is the best thing that's ever been produced on this planet. Have you ever heard of, of multivitamins, Gareth? Have yes, you? I have. They're horrible. I I can't have them. Multivitamins are synthetic, my boy. Okay, they are, but they're still produced. They are produced, but however, sin, uh, multivitamins still have, and this is my main my main argument, still have a sell by date. Honey never goes off. Honey ah. is literally everlasting. Whilst it can harden and crystallize, all you have to do is warm it back up, and it's good as new. And I've got to say, I don't know about you, but I love crystallized honey. I just love honey in general. I don't I don't know if that was apparent or not. By this <laughs> argument, <laughs> I've, I've had it before. Where one of my sort of favorite healthy dishes, mm. if I was craving a bit of sweetness, would be you get some fruit, mm. get some Greek style yogurts. Okay, that's an interesting debate between the word Greek and Grecian. But anyway, that's another time. <laughs> okay, For a very sad afternoon. I oh, right. It's really interesting. <laughs> um, some Greek style yogurts, mm-hmm. and you get some crystallized honey. And then just all together creates just this wonderful mixture of loveliness. It's amazing. With a little, even a little bit of chocolate powder on top. Ooh. Right. Good. You heard it here first, folks. It's now two, two, one and a quarter. I win. Thank you for listening ah, to the podcast. Well, ah, I haven't even started yet. We're just, we're skirting the issue. Well, you know? let me make my, my uh, solid point, my, my ground, so that you can argue against it first. Go Shall we? It. So... There is multiple things as to why I think honey is the best thing ever produced. One, one of the things being the main thing is that it is everlasting. It doesn't ever go off, right? That is a very big point in today's society because you've got things like milk, product, meat, anything, even plant-based products have an expiry date, whereas honey does not, okay? There's another point as to what honey is produced by, and that is bees, honeybees, to be specific, and... If we didn't have honeybees on this planet, thanks to our friend the Bee Movie, you like jazz, we wouldn't be here, okay? We okay. need bees to pollinate the planet, right? If bees didn't exist, honey wouldn't exist, we wouldn't exist. Life on Earth would be fahooked, in a okay. in a better word. I'm not finished, my boy. Oh, okay? no. <laughs> So, and then on top of that, as you clearly just demonstrated without me even having to argue, honey is one of those things in life that is extremely, extremely good tasting, sweet, and beneficial health-wise to you. Honey helps colds, flus, and throat, uh, and a sore throat, as well as produces um, a good metabolism because it gives you the right amount of sugars, in your body, and it can also get to a point where in New Zealand and Australia you've got manuka honey that literally has a scale on how good it is in terms of um, medical or medicinal value. 
and that shit is expensive. It is so expensive as fuck, but, but so it is expensive. extremely good for you. Because honey is, is, is a god's blessing. It is god's tears, as I would like to call it. God's tears. God's the tears. tears. The golden tears of God. All right? That sound right, does it? And you can add honey to so many things, whether it be savory, you can add it to sweet. You can literally put honey on a multitude of uh, items of food or, or even add it to drinks like tea and coffee and make them taste better. Even with a little bit of, little bit of honey, I rest my case. Thank you, Your Honor. I will take my seat. I can't believe I'm going here. I'm, I am stepping on <laughs> forbidden ground Ooh. by saying this. I'm going towards the dark shrine. Don't do it. Don't try it. What about gluten? <gasps> gluten oh, no. is such a powerful agent. There is nothing in, and I can attest to this. Oh my god, <laughs> he's he's done it. He's gone down. He's gone down a dark path. <laughs> I can feel the cheeks swelling. This is just going to end. <laughs> Don't, do it, and Don't do it, Joe. Don't do it. But gluten is incredible because it is one of. As far as I'm aware, one of the only <laughs> glutinous um, agents out there that is able to create the texture that it does. Now, here's here's what I think about honey, and here's here's my sort of counter, if you will. Honey is incredible, and I can't disagree that it's it's an, an amazing. It's one of the top five sort of food consumable products that has ever been naturally created because it is. It's got medicinal purposes it's good for your vocal cords it's good for you it tastes great mm -hmm. it's actually one of the only ways as well that you can have a natural sweetness to something mm -hmm. without having what we call simplified sugars so yeah. you know you get refined sugars which are really bad for you because they are very simple they're small chains of carbohydrate they um, absorb into your blood very quickly they this, cause your insulin to spike and thus causing your you know causing right. diabetes causing you to this is weight. why I said it speeds up the metabolism instead of slows it down for that exact yeah. reason thank you and it's like with with honey as it's a natural sugar there are, the the carbohydrate chains are actually longer and they take a bit longer to break down and they actually digest slightly slower thus causing less of an insulin response than refined sugar but yet it's just as sweet and mm -hmm. just as damn tasty mm. so <clears throat> please sponsor us honey correct. thank you <laughs> yeah, yeah bees so <laughs> you are absolutely correct that the honey is this incredible incredible food that has medicinal purposes the only one thing about honey and the one limitation which irritates me is that it does not stay the same through different temperature ranges you can freeze honey, you can have it uh, liquidy, you can have it crystallized. But the problem with honey is that if you heat it up, it's going to turn into um, a less viscous liquid. It's going to melt mm. and it's going to become runnier. Mm. So that really, in my, in my mind, that limitates... <laughs> limitates? <laughs> oh no, the gluten's <laughs> taken over. <laughs> oh no. In my mind, that limits what you can do with it. Because if let's say you want to put honey in your cake... Right. Yes. It will add sweetness, yes. but it's just going to go into the mixture and disappear. It's only going to add a t it's it's going to add a sensation at the end. It might add some taste as well, but it's going towards a sensation. Mm. With something like gluten, mm. gluten is something that it, it's an agent that you can put into any flavor at any temperature and it can it can work its magic. You can heat it up, you can let it cool down after that, you can put it into bread that you can bake, you can put it into sauces to thicken, you can do almost anything with it, with across any flavour, whether it be sweet, savoury, in between, whatever it is, you can create things that are full of air and light and fluffy, you can create things that are thick and doughy and chewy, you can create like the densest of brownies all the way to the lightest of sponges. Gluten is, for me, one of those things that there is just nothing in nature that is at all similar to it and it really does stand on its own because there's nothing there which it is even synthetic there's nothing really there which is able to recreate the sensation recreate the the effect of what it can do your honor i'd like to create a counterpoint please a counter to my counter 
counter to your counter is the fact that gluten cannot just stand on its own, my dear friend Joel. All these products um, and savoury and sweet items that you are explaining need their assisted products. Yeah. You cannot make a cake without sugar, which is bad for you. You cannot <laughs> make bread without flour, without any type of kind of fact acting, fact acting, <laughs> fast acting <laughs> yeast and stuff like that. And, and even salt for that matter. You know, you, you, you need all these additional products that help gluten to become what it is. My also counterpoint to my counterpoint that's your counterpoint is that the fact that honey can be so diverse across a range of temperatures is a good thing, not a bad thing. As it said, you just mentioned that you put crystallized honey onto your morning fruit bowl, right? <laughs> you wouldn't be able to do that if honey wasn't so diverse across temperature ranges can you put gluten onto a fruit bowl i think I fucking not I all right put gluten onto anything i eat now <laughs> you can't even if you could you can't okay because it would taste like shit all right <laughs> you can drizzle a little bit of honey on anything and it'll be okay you put a bit of gluten on that some of them will, will be allergic the others who who do you know that's allergic to honey no one. I, I to be fair, no I bet one. I bet it's out there. I bet there is no one an allergy to honey. There is no such thing. And <laughs> and that is why honey is the best thing ever. I think if I wanted to take something that can just be so malleable and so reusable that can be added to so many different things at ease without having any other subs- um any other subsidized or added products. Honey stands there at the tippy top of the mountain by itself. You could live off of honey. You can't live off gluten. No. Well, you can you live off honey? Of course you, you can. Could. It wouldn't no, be very not... healthy, but if you had honey and water, you could live off honey. You're starting to sound more like Pooh Bear every minute. Oh, bother. <laughs> So, so, because uh, you mentioned that I do on my morning fruit bowl occasionally put yogurt and crystallized honey. Hell yeah, now this you is do. fine, but the problem with honey changing states so easily and at such a low melting point is that you cannot control your honey. Be better at controlling honey. That is, you can't. If you live in Your Honor, UK, Your Honor, be better at controlling honey. Is that a no, valid argument? Denied. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have been stopped. There's a, it, you know, you you get your honey, and if it's a written, I, I had I actually had this with with some honey this this last summer um, that I was trying to because I wanted crystallized honey this summer, and if it's been a really warm day, your honey is now back and it's quite liquid. It's back as a liquid. It's quite runny, and all of a sudden it it screws up my entire yogurt fruit bowl because I'm like I can't have runny honey. It's not going to work. I have to then hold change it what I do. Oh, it's a nightmare. But then in the winter, I get lovely crystallized honey because it cools down enough to the point and it's old enough to the point where it's... Good. This is why you put honey in a cupboard and you have two, yeah. two jars of honey, one, one crystal, one runny, just saying. But that that's, seems you know, like more of a you problem. Let's <laughs> get, get a colder house, Joel. Let's oh get, get a better honey consumption rate. Fucking loser. <laughs> so the, the thing about that is that if you, if you do that, then you can't control the honey. Well, with something like gluten, <laughs> yes, it's an agent. Yes, it does usually come in the form of flour. And, you know, obviously it does come as a carbohydrate and so on and so forth. But it can be added to anything at any temperature. And it can have a different effect at all temperatures that can be controlled and also changed after the fact. Or at least prepared for. How many pieces of bread have you made in your life, Joel? I've actually made loads of bread yeah? before. I, while I could, I made the most of it, and I made so many. Oh, the fresh and how, fresh dough. Just as a question, how many times did you fuck up the dough? Not many. Dough's dough's really? pretty easy to make. No, yeah, it's yeah. not. Not 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 well. <laughs> Mate, I would love for you to make me bread, and I'll come to your your house, feel that bread, and be like, "Yeah, it's still raw." You knob. <laughs> do, you, do you know how painful it would be? It would be 
for me to make you bread. I would that would be smelling this gorgeous <laughs> light mm. bread mm. that's so. Oh, sorry, I'm, so, I'm that. sorry. Just, just Your Honor, can I just make a, a quick point of him making an argument against me about gluten, in which he argues that that is the best thing, but it would be painful him for him to make it for me. Isn't that interesting? Hmm? What I'm what does the jury think about that? Yes, no, I think it's a very, very bad thing that the thing that he's, he's trying to defend and counter against it is the fact that gluten, he is allergic. There oh. is there is no, 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 there is no jury. That's just you putting on a silly voice. And I can tell. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm leaving. Oh, here we are. Here we are. Like, listen <laughs> to this. Listen to this. Right? How do you know if you are allergic to honey? Eating honey or skin coming off? Oh, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. He's trigger. using Google. He's <laughs> using Google. We, no we, 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 no, we agreed beforehand not to use Google and look up any information. This is cheating. Okay, I'm just in my head. I, I happen to know that you can have an <laughs> anaphylactic reaction from honey. I'll give you an anaphylactic reaction from gluten. Well, I'll shove it down your fucking throat in a minute. Listen, <laughs> right? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot, I'm sorry, but I cannot agree that you think gluten, when you are literally allergic to it, is better than honey. That is something I cannot believe that you adamantly think. And I know you're just trying to play devil's advocate, because that's the point of this game. But gluten holds no, and this this was another big part of my argument, which you can try and dispute now. Gluten holds no... um, detrimental value to our ecosystem on the planet what hey, what honey is produced by one of the most important creatures on this planet gluten has no impact on our ecosystem if it just vanished i i bet it would no i bet something would happen nope nope i disagree i mean nope i mean we get a lot more gluten-free products in we get a lot more gluten-free pro- products yes that is that is very true However, if my if bees cease to exist, meaning honey ceased to exist, the planet would crumble and fall apart. If gluten ceased to exist, we'd keep living. What? Well, yeah, but isn't the fact that honey is so difficult to produce? Because I mean, it's you, not. You know, the amount of the amount of work that goes into keeping bees and getting them to produce all this honey, and then getting all the honey off, and then you know refining the honey to make sure that you haven't got any of the any of the wax in there and not only that but I mean, they work so hard for this stuff and then you just go and take it up oh, that's mine start again no go on no no you've isn't clear- that a problem you've clearly not done so your research okay i so, don't know much about bees. <laughs> um the the honey that is extracted from honeybees they're not creating it to to use it's just okay. imagine imagine a robot right Imagine a ro- not saying bees are robots, but imagine a robot <gasps> um, building a sandcastle because it was told to, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you just came and took the sandcastle. The robot wouldn't care. It would go and build the next sandcastle it was demanded, right? Okay. Bees are, in that very sense, pretty much told by the queen to create this um, wall when it's made for, like, repurposing honey of... Of basically a hive, pretty much of, of honey um, hexagons, right? They don't you use see, them. No. They never use them. Yeah. That's not that's not how that that's not how they they eat. That's not how they live. And when when they get pulled out, they're they're done so so they get pulled out in these walls of um, of hive, and then they get scraped off so that the the there's a very small hive still there that then they, they then build if they didn't do that right the bees wouldn't have anything to do yeah so i but i've got two points here because and they're they're important number one you're condoning bee slavery right now right here you're yes. saying oh yeah enslave the bees make them work do it all again and keep no, doing it forever what i'm what i'm doing is encouraging bee habilitation rehabilitation rehabilitation no, I like I like bee-abilitation. Bee-abilitation, right? Very clever. Well Thank you. Came up with it myself. <laughs> is that extra points, Your Honour? Thank you. Yeah, it is. Um, is it? Is it, Your <laughs> Honour? Please. 
the Have some um, sense. <laughs> gluten. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, like uh, you have completely fucking threw me off my point. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> bees being um, in a habitat that is looked after actually is healthier for them than them being out in the in the wild because they have the the ability to leave and go wherever they want. It's not that they're not locked in a cage. If anything, the queen is looked after and it is safe from attackers like hornets. Ooh, that's what a slave owner would say. Listen, <laughs> all right? Bees aren't enslaved, they're looked after, okay? The queen yeah. is looked after from outside predators, all right? End of story. Yeah. This is. I are disagree safe. with your argument, whatever. Okay, Don't bring so- in slavery. Fine. Let's say that bees aren't slaves. They just love not having a choice in what they do in life. They do have um, a choice. What the? F- oh, you get extent. me riled up. <laughs> <laughs> but when when people go and no, get their honey, right? no, not to an like, no, 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 not to an extent. All right, shut your mouth. Shut, hush your mush. <laughs> right, not to an extent. Okay, they're in boxes, wooden boxes that are layered with columns. Okay, they can go out of those boxes literally whenever they please and piss off to another dimension for all they care. Right? But they don't, because you know why? The queen's there, and the queen doesn't leave. The queen is looked after, and then the bees come back to the queen and look, hey, look, I've got some pollen for you, my queen, and the queen's like, yeah, no, fucking get out. Do it again. Right? <laughs> so, that is the life of a bee, right? If anything, right. The, the queen bee is enslaving her entire army, not us. We're to- yeah, we're talking about the purpose of the bee. But anyway, oh my God. Get, uh, aside, aside Honey. from the purpose of the bee... <laughs> Honey, listen. Aside from the purpose of the bee... When we go to collect said honey, and yes. we go to destroy said hexagonal... Hexagonal. Oh my goodness. When we go to Adjourned. get the honey. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we, we wear these big protective suits. Some of now, them, Actually, no. Some people don't. Some people don't, up. because they have such a harmony with the bees. No, they but genuinely we wear these do, yeah. big protective suits, and that's because the bees try and sting you. No, they because don't. They're like, we're not happy the nope, fact that you're nope. removing our home. Disagree. Fuck off. Actually disagree, because that is, that's a old myth that is not true anymore. Yes, bee suits do exist, um, but when bees sting you, they die, right? So they don't risk their life by stinging you. There is plenty of videos of people who look after bees, of like literally scooping them out of nests and scooping them out of various different things with like bare hands just to see if they're okay bees honeybees do not adamantly sting anyone um unless threatened and nine times out of ten they're not threatened Mm, okay okay so you're saying you've got to you've got to destroy their home in a non-threatening way basically (sighs) (laughs) i hate you so much right now (laughs) okay here's let me give you a review of where i'm up to with this all right, mm-hmm. so I, I, <laughs> yeah, come on, spit it out, blues and boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, in my mind, I am happy to put gluten and oh. honey on a level pegging. Nope. Absolutely. Nope. Gluten and how? Honey. How is gluten in any way, shape, or form on par with honey? Because it's an incredible thing. It's got an incre- it's got an incredible versatility. But it goes off. Honey doesn't. Honey it's, goes it, off if you leave it out. No, if it you doesn't. leave it the jar un- unopened. No, it doesn't. If you keep it enclosed. Yeah, it does. No, it honey, doesn't. Honey can spoil if you if you No, it, it doesn't. Anything liquidy can spoil. You can literally Google course. it now. I, I give I give you the opportunity to Google does honey spoil? No, it doesn't. <laughs> it, it does. No, honey it doesn't. Does spoil. No, it doesn't. It is one of the very few things on this planet that does not spoil. It crystallizes, goes hard, and then you just warm it up, and it's fine. That's the so whole the, point. The Smithsonian Museum here says, while honey is certainly a superfood, it isn't supernatural. If you leave it out, unsealed in a human environment, Super it will food. spoil. As Harris explains, as long as the lid stays Super on food. and no water is added, honey will not go bad. So if you, if it's enclosed, it won't go bad. You just you heard it here first, folks. Superfood. <laughs> type type in now. Right. Type in on your mental palace that is <laughs> cheating. 
Is gluten a superfood? No, it's not. Journey adjourned. Thank you. Bye bye. I rest my case. <laughs> okay, let me. I will. I will concede up to seventy five percent. No, that's my final offer. Because it's well. To be fair, it's not an offer. That is. That is what I feel. <laughs> that's that's the best you're gonna get. <laughs> that's it. Seven. I, I completely agree with you. The respect that it is an incredible. Oh, no. Okay. End podcast. Bye bye, guys. He completely <laughs> agrees with me. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs> It's an incredible superfood, and it has an amazing application. And not only that, it's also great for your health. While yes. gluten is usually good for us in very small doses, it's not exactly designed for us to have a lot of. No, then and again, neither is honey. No, but I think honey probably does bring a bit more nutritional value to the yes, table than does. just gluten itself. It does. I mean, you can't just eat gluten anyway. It's no, all, it's, it's, it's always like... supplemented with something else. That, yeah, it's an that is my big. This is why I can't agree with you on the fact that gluten is on par because gluten isn't a standalone thing. Gluten is a byproduct of various things. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, you're right. There is gluten is although it's an incredible thing, and I think wheat. I should have probably just said generally like wheat flour because yeah. the amount of different types of flours and glutens and all that sort of stuff goes very, very in depth. And I just miss bread, but. <laughs> ultimately <laughs> ultimately if... i'm right and <laughs> you've just got a unfortunately you miss bread so much that you are basically having a come down um on missing bread that's it yeah 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 I'm, you're having I'm withdrawal just, this is that's just it gluten bread withdrawal. depression yeah yep so, so yeah, I think so. Seventy five percent agree. No, I think that's a two diverse. to one and a quarter win there, my boys. It's a definitely one point seven five to one point two five ratio. Right I d- now. I disagree. Absolutely, <laughs> you can't I, disagree. <laughs> I, no, I do. I do disagree because you you're arguing that gluten is the best, and it's not. <laughs> you literally just agreed with me that honey is better than gluten. Yeah, if, honey's if, awesome. Why not? Well, there you go. If, if, so, if it makes it you is, feel better. It is two. Let's, let's, no, let's it will make it. me feel better because I know I won. So two. <laughs> 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 okay, so it's two to one point two five. One and a quarter. I need, yeah. I need to pick better arguments. I think you do. To be fair, to be fair, I feel a bit bad because like you're picking cars, and I don't know anything about cars. So. I thought you'd have a stronger opinion on on the yobs, but it, actually, it turned out that you were pretty indifferent about it. Yeah, I don't really care. I, I just think they're yobs with small knobs, if if you're loud. Great stuff. So Well, and you uh, are... Apparently, you're a yob with a big knob. <laughs> <laughs> you are ahead in this so-called now race that is a thing. Easy. Okay. Easy. Yeah, all right. Easy. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, Minger. And, <laughs> Loser. Um, don't, don't expect to be ahead for long. It shouldn't be a race. It's not a race. It's, it's not, not a race. Hard. I didn't say it was a race. I'm just saying that there's points involved. There's no need. I, there's, this is not a petty competition. This is, it is. two scholars. It is, and I'm winning. Two so scholars talk. It's it is, and I'm winning. So you're a loser. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>